So the next thing we're going to do is actually start creating our website. So right now we've got a completely blank page. We're going to add our nav bar as the very first thing. But actual developers typically don't create things from scratch, right? Because that would take way too long. So instead, what we do is we use code that other people have made for us, and then we can just implement it into our website as we need. Now, in order to do this, we're going to get something called Bootstrap. So we go to Google and type in Bootstrap 4. And we'll see this introduction. Quick start. So we could include this, but instead we're going to go to download. We're going to click download here, compiled CSS and JS. So that's going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to see this. Did it finish downloading? Yes. So we'll right click it, extract files. Grab here. Great. So I'm just going to rename this to bootstrap which will make it easier to reference these files later. And then I'm going to cut or control X on this file, then go into our summer camp and paste it. Okay, so now we've got bootstrap here. So the next thing we're going to do is include the CSS and the JS files. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a whole bunch of predefined things that we can just take as like really quickly without having to create it ourselves. So the two files we're going to need is this bootstrap.css and bootstrap.js. So in order to include that, we're going to type link rel equals style sheet. Whoops, style sheet. And href, which is our link, will equal slash bootstrap slash CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS. Now we can close out of that and we're good. Then we're going to type in script source equals slash bootstrap slash JS slash bootstrap dot JS. And then we're going to close our source tag or our script tag, sorry. Um, now another thing that we're going to need is jQuery. So we're going to type in jQuery into Google. Download. Download the compressed production. So it's just going to give us this long file. Um, you're going to hit control A to highlight everything, then control C. Go back to our Visual Studio, cl right click and click new file, and type in jQuery.js. JS stands for JavaScript, and then paste it in here. So now we should have this really long file. And now we're going to include it. So script source equals slash jQuery.js. Okay, so now we should have everything that we need for Bootstrap. So I'm going to go back to Google and I'm going to type in Bootstrap Navbar. It'll just be a really quick way. So we could have went to Components and Navbar. I didn't know that. So this was a really easy way to figure it out. And we're just going to scroll down until we see this Navbar. Cool. So we can pick realistically any one that we want. I'm just going to grab this one. So all you have to do is take all the code. Oh, right up here there's a copy. And then in our body, we're going to paste it. Now if we refresh our page, Okay, so the navbar isn't working, so we've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, I found the problem. So it's because I put the slash. We're gonna actually need to start putting those slashes later, but for right now it won't work.
but I'll just explain that later. So now if I get rid of the slashes, and I refresh the page, okay. So we've got this nav bar. So I'm noticing there's this can't read property fn of undefined. So I googled bootstrap and then I just copied it in. And then I found this on Stack Overflow where somebody says you need to load jQuery first before bootstrap. Now you're probably wondering why am I showing this error? Well, it's because this is how you're gonna troubleshoot. So basically we need to load jQuery at the very top. That's the first thing we need to load. Let's see if that works. Okay, great, so our nav bar is working. Um, yeah, so it looks a little bit different and this is because bootstrap is mobile friendly. So if we go to, if we click this button right here, toggle device toolbar, we can actually change what things will look like. So if we were on an iPad Pro, it'll give us that layout. You'll notice now our nav bar looks good or looks how it did here. And that's because uh, an iPad has a very big width, but if we go back to like our Galaxy S5, that's a phone. So it's going to bring this little menu instead. You'll notice that in a lot of websites nowadays. So if we close it here, it'll just go back to our normal nav bar. Something else that I wanna show you is if we change this from nav bar light to nav bar dark, and then that to nav bar or BG dark, and then we refresh our page, it'll give us the dark version. So that's the one that I'm gonna go with personally. Okay, so if we look at our nav bar code, you'll notice it's really long. And you probably don't know what most of it means and that's fine. But if we had an HTML page like this, it would be really easy to get lost. So what we're going to do is create a new folder called components. And then in this folder, we're gonna right click and create another new folder called navbar. And then we're gonna click new file and we're gonna call this navbar.html. Now we're gonna go back to here and we're gonna take all of this nav stuff, we're gonna cut it and we're gonna put it inside navbar.html. Great. So now we refresh our page and if we reload it, our nav bar will be gone. So we're gonna use jQuery to load our nav bar into a div. So jQuery is a JavaScript library and all that means is that it's a bunch of functions that make JavaScript better. So we'll get into that later. Now you might be thinking that, okay, well, if we're using JavaScript, then we do the script tag and we start doing the functions and stuff, sort of but using a script tag is actually not how people do this. Instead, what we're going to do is create a new file called home.js. And now that's where we're gonna be putting all of our JavaScript. We don't need to put another script tag in here. It just knows that it's a script because it's JavaScript. And then up here, we're gonna say script source equals home.js. So now we'll be able to call functions from this file by typing it in anywhere just because of this. So we're gonna create a function called include HTML. And then I'm just gonna use this code that I found off the internet. So we're gonna use this dollar sign, which is a jQuery thing. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna grab each div that has the data include property and we're going to loop through them. And then we're gonna create a function here. Curly braces and enter. So that looks crazy, I know. I just found that on the internet. But basically, what this is saying is we're gonna loop through every div that has data include, which I will show you what that means later. And then we're gonna run code. So we're gonna type in this dot load this dot data include and you need to make sure that everything is spelled perfectly and there's symbols right there exactly where they need to be so for reference when i first looked at this i was like what does that even mean and i honestly 
don't even necessarily know it enough to describe it appropriately, but that's fine because I Googled how to add HTML from a different file in jQuery and it gave me this code. So we're gonna go back to our HTML into this body and we're gonna type in div data include equals components slash navbar slash navbar dot html and we're going to end our div and we're going to see if that works so right now our navbar is gone so what are we doing wrong so it's really obvious we have this include html but we never actually call it so as soon as the document loads, we want to include HTML. We want to call that right away. So I'm going to Google jQuery on document ready. Then I'll click here, copy this code. Cool. So now this console.log will automatically happen, but instead we're going to call include HTML. Then if we refresh our page, still nothing's happening, but we're getting a console error. So the reason we're getting this error is because Google Chrome has security features and it doesn't want you to just load in another file because otherwise somebody else could just give you like an HTML file that opens one of your private files or something. So we're actually at a standstill now. We are no longer able to develop our code using just Visual Studio and just Google Chrome. So we need what's called a server. But luckily, we can install a server locally on our machine. So we're gonna type in WAMP. And you're gonna find this WAMP server download. And we're going to click wampserver.com. Download. Wamp server 64 bits. Download it directly. And now it'll start downloading. So we're going to wait for that to download real quick. Okay. So now that WAMP is downloaded, it's gonna ask if we want to install it. Click yes. We're gonna click English. I accept. Next, next. Now it says it already exists because I already have it. So I'm going to install another copy of it just for testing. WAMP 64-2, but you don't need to do this part. We're gonna click next next and then click install but i'm not actually going to install it okay then once it's done if we go to wamp 64 which will be now located in your local disk c drive there will be this www folder so we're going to empty it there's probably nothing in there for you but we're going to go back to our Summer Camp 2020 website and cut everything from there into this www folder. Okay, so now instead of doing the URL like this, we're going to click our WAMP, which will now be here. Oh, if WAMP hasn't loaded, just hit the Windows menu and type in WAMP and then start WAMP server. So you should have this green W installed now. So click it and then click localhost. Mine's gonna bring this up in Internet Explorer, but instead of doing that, you can just go back to Chrome, type in localhost. And then you're gonna notice it just displays all of our files. 
That's because it's looking for an index.html. That is the, the file that's default loaded. So close out of Visual Studio and then reopen it. And we're going to click File, Open Folder, then go to WAMP64 and open that www folder. Then all of your files should be in Visual Studio now. Once again, so we're going to take this home.html and we're going to rename that to be index.html. And then we're going to rename this to be index.js. And then we're going to change this source to be index.js. So now if we reload our local host, you'll notice that it automatically loads and it's loading our navbar. So sort of a refresher, because I know that was a big one. I had hoped to uh, do the WAMP stuff a little bit later, but I didn't realize it was reliant on the navbar. So basically before we were running things off of like an HTML file, but now we have those HTML files located in a server that is on our computer that is being run. And our server runs in the URL called localhost. So anytime you want to get to it, type localhost. Then as far as our nav bar goes, we have this div with data include, uh, which is referencing our components slash nav bar slash nav bar dot html. And then we call include html as soon as our document's ready. And what that does is it loops through every single div on our page. This is a div. And it grabs the data include. Now this is referring to what we're looping through. So this div, for example, is here. So that would be this, which I know is a little hard to understand, but it's saying load what is the include value into this div. So the include value is navbar.html. So it's saying load navbar.html into this div. So then if we right click here, you'll see this div data include equals components slash navbar slash navbar.html. So that is just to confirm that it has it right here and it's loading it. So we could theoretically now have like four of these and it will loop through every single div with data include and load it into that div. So just to test if we refresh the page, there's four nav bars. So now we'll be able to include uh, different files rather than have them all in the exact same file because that would start to get really messy.